One day it's going to be the answer to a trivia question. Where did Old Dominion University's football team play its very first CAA game? The answer, Newark, Delaware, in Delaware Stadium, where today the Monarchs fall to the defending national runner-up, Delaware, 27-17. Ted Alexander joined in Newark by Jack Ankerson. Jack, not a bad debut. No, not at all, Ted. Uh, they give a great account of themselves here as they made their CAA debut and I think that proved to a lot of people got a very representative football team. I think the thing we have to remember is the fact that Delaware made it all the way to the title game a year ago. <laughs> this is a good football team. And they actually should have won it last year if you remember. They got beat uh, by a point in that in that title game last year and they are a very good football team. The experts had the Monarchs more than a three touchdown underdog in this game. Let's see what unfolded here in Newark, Delaware. All right. Early on, Delaware rolling down the field until the Monarch defense forces a turnover. Yeah, we saw that we right away in the beginning of the game. We saw that series of plays for Delaware repeat itself over and over, how they move the football, but then that fumble right away, and that gave Old Dominion a little shot in the arm right away. Carvin Powell makes the recovery, and suddenly, hey, Old Dominion goes three and outs, the uh, first drive for Delaware, no points, and then special teams come into this thing, and what a huge play from the Monarchs on the punt squad. No question, Ted. Special teams, defense and offense, three phases of the game. Special teams delivered on that punt with a uh, the long snapper. So crazy. Uh, a little bit crazy, yeah. <laughs> no question about it. But Lovett takes it in for the touchdown, and we're on the board first. Tipped not once, but twice. Chris Lovett is the man on the spot. He goes in from 18 yards, and it's 7-0 Old Dominion. And who thought that would happen? Monarchs in business, and then the special teams again on an attempted field goal. On the attempted field goal, blocked the field goal, and uh, really playing well with special teams, keeping us in the game along with the defense, but the blocked field goal, and here we go again. Still 7-0 Old Dominion. Finally, the Blue Hens cash in on a drive. Again, they were just eating up yards uh, on offense. A 40-yard field goal makes it 7-3 at the end of the first quarter of play. They add another field goal from Boehner to make it 7-6, and then a big-time play from Delaware uh, as uh, uh, Nigel White comes up big from seven yards out. Yeah, no question about that. They threw the fade in the end zone and a big catch by the big receiver for Delaware, their number one receiver all day long. And uh, so Delaware now takes the lead. The Blue Hens average under, uh, under 190 yards a game in passing. They had over 200 at the intermission. Tim Donnelly had a nice half. No question about that. We were concerned, I'm sure, as the coaching staff. And did a great job stopping the run game. But Donnelly had a good game throwing the ball for Delaware. And then the second half. All right, the Monarchs are trailing at the intermission by a final uh, a count of 13-7. to seven. What would they do in the second half? Well, after a miss field goal of 25 yards by Boehner. Monarchs had a drive going and then they get a field goal from Jared Brown to bring them to within 13-10. 13-10 and we're right back in this game. It's the third quarter and you know things are looking very very good for Monarch Nation. Then uh-oh a turnover. Turnovers in any game will kill you especially when you're in a nip and tucker. Colby Goodwin. Monarchs thought he had the ball at the bottom of that pile. That's why Bobby Wilder went nuts and he wasn't pleased. He really wasn't. He as it was explained to him as he explained to us that uh, they thought Colby Goodwin had the football at the, after it was all said and done but no they, the another official ruled that the, the play down with Delaware recovering a fumble. So Boehner kicks his third field goal of the game and it's 16-10, but the Monarchs in the early moments of the fourth quarter still within one score and then they're trying to get a drive going. The offense looks sharper in the second half, but still they needed to keep that defense on the bench a little bit just to give them a break and they come up with a huge play. They certainly did. Let's talk about that great play, huh? Fourth down <laughs> Fourth for the down. Monarchs in their own territory. And all day long the Monarchs have been sitting in this spread formation and uh, on the punt. And Plisco steps on the field. We think he's going to punt. Why would we think anything else? Because he's an All-American punter, and he's punted for a 50-yard average in the first five or six punts of the day, and he takes it up the gut, showing athleticism, number 31. Yes, he did. In fact, it did a little juking and jiving out there as well in that, in that run and kept that momentum, kept the drive going for Old Dominion. But the thing is, if you do a great play like that and have momentum on your side, if you don't cash in, it's not worth a dime, but they cashed in. They cashed in. A great pass to Antonio Vaughn. Great catch. DeMarco's pass right on the money. Vaughn made the great catch, and now look. It's 17-16, Old Dominion with a lead with 9.50 to go. But a huge Travis Hawkins kickoff return puts the Blue Hens in business at the Monarch 32. Yeah, the last thing we wanted to see happen in a situation like that, of course, is a big, long return, and they got it, and they, that's exactly right, right back in Old Dominion territory at the 32-yard line. Donnelly, one play later to Rob Jones, 32-yard touchdown pass, and the Blue Hens got a two-point conversion. It was 24-17. They'd add a field goal to make the final score 27-17, but this baby was still in doubt in the fourth quarter, and that's one of the things, one of the things we were looking for. Absolutely right. It's what Bobby Wilder was looking for all week long. Can we be in that fourth quarter? Will we be in a position to win that football game? And they were. 
Final score, 27-17. Monarchs fall to 3-1 and one on the year. They are 0-1 in CAA play. And don't forget, it's blackout time with UMass coming for the first CAA home game on Saturday. Yeah, 7 o'clock tip-off next Saturday night. It should be a lot of fun. I mean, we heard Thomas DeMarco. He said he's already looking ahead now to next Saturday. They're focused. They know they can play in this league. For Jack Ankerson, Ted Alexander from Newark, Delaware, where the Monarchs fall to the Blue Hens, 27-17.